wondering why. Why she had to struggle so hard and work and work. Barely no time for us so she could provide us a better life as a single mom. But despite working hard, I see her struggle. One day, I saw her crying in her room, looking depressed. As a little kid, wondering and ask her, Mom, I'm hungry. Is there any food? And she responds to me and said, Sorry, honey, I don't have enough money today to buy food. Just drink water to fill you up. At the time, I was kind of upset, I'm hungry. But deep inside, I felt it's painful for me to watch her struggle. So I told myself that I don't want that to be my life. I don't want that to be my life. I don't want to struggle like my mother did. As the years went on, I made a decision to myself that I want to empower myself. I want to better myself. With the help of some relatives and working at a young age, I was able to get an education and became a nurse. And I knew that was the next step for a better life. But little did I know that my journey will only start as I embark another life living in a foreign country. So, adversity. As I moved to a different country, living my homeland, Philippines, it was a very scary thing. Imagine yourself moving to a different country you've never been. It was nerve-wracking experience by yourself, no support system. So in the process of adopting a new language, new culture, new weather, it was a nerve-wracking experience. There are many times that my limits got tested. In the beginning, at a young age, moving to a different country, it's freedom. It's exciting, away from a very conservative culture. Figuring out how will I strive in, how will I fit in, and hoping to be welcomed in a country I've never been. So, if anyone isn't aware of even how educated you are back home, a nurse, a doctor, engineer, You have to start over again. It's a different story. You have to got step one, which I did. But then the biggest breakdown happened in my life on a Sunday afternoon. As I was driving in a busy intersection, a car turning left hit the car right on the driver's side. Imagine my, my windshield is smashed. Airbag went on. Gas is leaking. I was shocked. I was scared. I thought it's the end of my life. People said I was lucky, despite the huge damage. I was alive with only minor damage. But then after the accident, a few months, I received another news. A loved one passed away. It was my dad. It was very unexpected. He's still young. Although I have a strange relationship with my dad, it's still a loss, heartbreaking. And speaking of heartbreak, I was also heart nursing a heartbreak that using it during the time. So what do you think expect I will feel? A car accident, a loss of a loved one, heartbreak. Then I suffer a depression. My doctor diagnosed super anxiety. Years went on when having depression, that is sex, it's real. Then I remember, as I was in my room, crying, I hear the, I remember the voice of a little kid promising herself that she doesn't want to struggle like her mom did. So that moment, I said I had enough. I stopped making excuses. 
I made a commitment to myself that I want to be the change I want to be. So, breakthrough. 2015, as I stood in front of 100 new Canadian citizens, I was asked by the judge to tell my story. He asked me, what has it been Canadian citizen for you? I wasn't prepared, I said, for community progress. And that moment, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Days after days on, it became my purpose. I knew that I had a, given a second life, a second chance. So later on, I realized that I would make an impact. I would make a difference through public speaking. In pursuit of looking for the purpose, I began to self-educate myself. I read a lot of books, personal development, business, attend conference, workshops, a lot of networking, hired a coach, and became a certified coach myself. So, approaching this came in, I first started traveling this year alone as a speaker, as a facilitator. I'm a national columnist of a national magazine, interviewing a famous politician, actor in the Philippines, elected as a JCA president, and building a coaching business. Reflecting on my success, my struggle and my success, there is a future that I want to see myself and the world I live in. Being here on stage is only a beginning. I believe in a world that a woman shouldn't struggle like my mother did. I believe in a world that a woman can be a mother, having a healthy relationship and be successful in her business or career. I believe of giving back because I felt when I had nothing. As a coach, I would like to inspire more women out there to feel sexy, to feel confident, and be in control with their lives. My ambition for a woman out there to be unstoppable and be fearless, never held up of any mistakes or failures. After going through all of this, this is the thing that I knew that is true. As a Japanese proverb saying, fall seven times, stand up eight. As I look back in my life and journey, I fall many several times. But here I am today, standing in front of you, a woman who is unapologetic, unstoppable of her vision and mission. You have to crawl before you use that. Thank you guys so much. Have a nice day.